So you're a pioneer in this, Dr. Kamsadeval. What can you tell us that is categorically and scientifically true about this treatment right now? Well, that's a, a hard question in sort of categorical truth. What I can say is that we have learned in the past several months that the treatment is generally safe. That is, is no, um, it's as safe as receiving plasma. And this is very important because over 30,000 patients have been treated and we have a really good safety profile. And if you have a good safety profile, that's one of the requirements for, for, any, for any sort of type of drug. So it may be a safe treatment, but do we know what outcomes there are? So does it make yes. it safer for you after the treatment? So there is a, quite a bit of data coming out. Um, uh, people are, uh, are impatient and saying, well, does it work? And I, what I would say is there is a large body of evidence that is very encouraging. But uh, what will really make it um, but the, the data that we need is randomized controlled clinical trials, and unfortunately, those take time to be done. And um, those are in, uh, in progress, but uh, the data short of a randomized controlled trial has been encouraging, and there have been several reports that early administration of plasma is associated with reduced mortality. So in a pandemic, people, you know, are desperate for treatments, particularly when they get to a certain stage. How do you get around the ethical and moral dilemmas associated with trying to carry out a test, you know, with r randomized, you know, patients? So some get the treatment and some don't, but they may equally be sick. So that is a very good question, and that is a problem when you're doing clinical trials in hospitals, because in hospitals, people are very sick. At Hopkins, uh, we have two clinical trials going on. The principal investigators are David Sullivan and Shmuel Shoham, and they all have focusing on the outpatient space. So one trial is looking at whether antibody works as prophylaxis. If you had a major exposure, for example, if you work in a hospital, and there has been a breakdown of personal protective equipment, and there is a high likelihood that you get infected. If you get a unit of plasma, would that prevent disease? So that's one trial. And there, it's quite ethical to do it because you're really looking at people who may or may not get infected. And the second trial is looking at people who are home with COVID-19 who are still, you know, okay. They, have, they don't need to go to the hospital. And there you offer them a unit of plasma and, or a control. And the question would be, if you receive a unit of convalescent plasma, does it, does it change the outcome? Does it prevent you from getting worse? So in these situations, it's not that hard to do them because we're dealing with people that are healthy, people in which the outcome is likely to be a, a good outcome, mm -hmm. uh, irrespective of what you do. And what we learn from them can then be applied to very sick patients. We're out of time, doctor, but briefly, if you would, what's the calendar goal? When are you hoping to have a, an important date? So it all depends on recruitment, how many patients you recruit. I can tell you that it's multi-centered. Dozens of centers are involved, and we're trying to get additional ones. But in a short answer, a couple of months.